All right, I'm going to be reading in my book, Faith at Full Speed. We're going to have a little story hour here. And I have something to share with you. This is uh, chapter, chapter 10, Taking the Win. So one day I was uh, writing chapter 10, and as I was writing chapter 10, I asked the Holy Spirit to reveal to me what he wanted me to teach in chapter 10. And a lot of these uh, teachings that I brought uh, in this book were things that I experienced when I was working in NASCAR. And the Lord said to me, Anna Marie, I want you to teach my people how to be victorious. I want you to teach them how to be winners for the kingdom. And <laughs> one day I'm fixing myself lunch and I'm thinking about, okay, Holy Spirit, you know, I am asking you for some revelation on what you want me to teach in the book for chapter 10. And I'm putting away some dishes in my kitchen, and I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, and he drops this in my spirit. He says, be your own stunt man. I was like, did I hear that right? Is that you, Lord? What? Be your own stunt man? <laughs> I, I started laughing because I couldn't believe the Holy Spirit said that. I was like, be your own stuntman? He said, yeah, and he said it again and again. Anna Marie, teach them to be their own stuntman. I was like, okay, Holy Spirit, if that's what you want me to write, I'm going to write it. <laughs> I was laughing. And so in this book, Chapter 10, Taking the Win. And those of you who have the book, it's on page 288. Remember, to his key, to his God will add a witness and confirm it. And 88, 8 is Jesus Christ and new beginning. You ready? Stop waiting. For other people to do it for you. Be your own stuntman. It's right here in this book. Be your own stuntman. <laughs> ha ha. I always joke that I do my own stunts. Sure, these are risks. But to be out front and boldly going for your goals. I also have another saying. My husband says this too. No risk it, no biscuit. Don't be afraid of boldly asking God for these things. He is waiting for you to ask, and angels are ready to be activated on your behalf to assist you. Going boldly before God, asking for what you want, and then jumping in with two feet by faith can be intimidating. I get it. Jumping off a known path of doing things that are uncomfortable to you can be scary. That is where the excuses start. Well, this is the way my family always did it, or this is the way my church always did it. Listen to me. The known path of man can be very worn with good intentions of many people, but does not always mean they are winners. Most of the time, it just means they were survivors. Trailblazing is where the traction is. It's a trail that leads to the highway of holiness that I talked about in the last chapter. Many times, you've got to blaze a trail to get traction, to get momentum, get some side bite, and then back tires, as my race car drivers used to say. Trailblazers are anointed by God to be winners. I have asked for this anointing, and the Lord gave it to me. I asked God for this winter anointing, and he said to me, I will make you a trailblazer. You want to be a trailblazer? Hmm? You want to do your own stunts? Don't be scared. If you're scared, say you're scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> 
when I when I was uh, racing with my race team, we had this guy on our crew. He always used to say, "If you're scared, say you're scared." <laughs> I don't know why he always said. He always used to say, "He used to go around and say, if you're scared, say you're scared. Get out of my way." <laughs> he was always jumping in there. But listen, you are a trailblazer. America was built by trailblazers. Your ancestors brought you forth by trailblazing. Come on. It's time to be bold and courageous and be your own stuntman or woman. Ask the Lord to make you a trailblazer. Blaze a trail and don't worry for others to catch up to you. God will eventually bring them through behind you. So a lot of you say, oh, Anna Marie, I don't want to try anything new. What if my family's not ready for it? What if they don't come by my side or come through with me? Do it anyway. They'll eventually catch up. I had to. Come on. Now, don't make this mistake. Thank God I learned my lesson. I asked for the trailblazer anointing from God. That I was too scared to use it. But, true story. Not only that once it was given to me, I had an assignment to do. And I would not do it until I thought my husband and daughter would do it with me. But they were not ready. God was still working on them. But that did not mean that I was supposed to wait. My assignment from the Lord was my YouTube broadcast. God wanted me to blaze a trail there. He gave me everything to do it. He had people waiting on me, but I was letting everything else hinder me, spin me out and using excuses why I could not do it right now. The microphone sat silent in my studio for months while I cried on my face to the Lord to move my husband and daughter into ministry with me so I could move forward. So for weeks and months, my microphone was collecting dust in my studio. My studio at that time was just a spare bedroom with quilts on the wall. I didn't have this really nice revelator microphone yet. I had just a, you know, basic microphone and But God was saying, what are you doing? Get in there. I asked for the trailblazer anointing that I was too scared to use it. What? So for weeks and months, my microphone was collecting dust in my studio. I was daily putting my face in the carpet. Sometimes dog or cat hair was there, but I didn't care. I was determined to get God to move on my behalf. But God was waiting on me to move. What? What? Are you crying out to God? Saying, God, I need you to move. I need you to move right now. Move. I need you to move right now. God's saying, you move. You move. See, because when we're moving, at least we're moving and God can direct our steps. But we're sitting on our butt. We're in disobedience. Number one, God has people waiting on your obedience. Number two, do it even if the conditions are not perfect. Number three, do it even if you're afraid. Number four, know that God has got your back. Number five, if you are being stretched out of your comfort zone, then you know it's from God. <laughs> now, many of you would not have even heard of me, would not even be reading this book or even be on this broadcast if I did not step out into obedience to the Lord the very next day after he spoke to me and told me to move. 
I fired up that microphone and began to do la- daily live broadcasts on YouTube. This is in August of 2017. Piccarello remens- remembers that. He's been with me since the beginning. And then uh, God brought uh, Jennifer and Goose, my team, and he brought my husband around. And he's bringing my daughter around. When you step out in obedience, God will bless everything around you. He will bring your family into alignment. He will bring your team into alignment. I'm telling you, he'll do it. He'll bring your finances. I, oh, come on. I sat my butt down in front of that microphone and started talking, teaching, and encouraging my listeners. I showed up every day just like God told me to. I had to rely completely on the Holy Spirit and the gifts and the anointing God had given me for daily messages. It was rough. It was grassroots broadcasting, nothing fancy. It was quilts on the walls to help the sound and chicken lamps <laughs> from the local tractor supply as rigged up as my camera lighting. I do I have pictures of it. I had no moderators on my broadcast. I didn't for the longest time. Then Picarillo finally came along. There were many interruptions and trolls coming on the chat, posting inappropriate stuff we had to try and block. I had a few loyal listeners that showed up almost immediately that were responding well to my teachings, and I stayed focused on helping them get a breakthrough to encourage others. Many of these early followers of my broadcast told me that my teachings and encouragement was exactly what they had been praying for. We are giving gifts by God to serve and help one another. See what I said? We're giving gifts by God to serve and help one another. If we do not use our gifts faithfully and obediently, others could be delayed in their need. How many of you have gotten breakthrough from this ministry? Do you realize if I hadn't get on this microphone and been obedient to the Lord, if I hadn't done what God told me to do, you would all still be held back? This is not about you. This is about everybody that God wants to help through you. Stop being selfish. Step into what God has called you to do and do it scared. Don't worry. He's got you. Come on. If we do not use our gifts faithfully and obediently, others could be delayed in their need. There are people praying you into their life right now. This is why it cannot wait. This is not just about us. The picture is so much bigger. Those first weeks of broadcast, I was pulling from everything inside of me and everything the Holy Spirit flowed to me, keeping my foot on the gas and hands on the steering wheel to speak. The seat in the wheels under me felt a little squirrely. <laughs> there were distractions, but I had to push myself past it in faith and know that God would never lie to me and God had faith in me. What? God has faith in you to do it. What have you been putting off? It's time to be your own stuntman and dive in. God has faith in you to do it. Wow. God was going to make sure I won, that my team won, that my family won. I just had to trust in him. And stretch myself doing whatever it takes to do this. Life in the Faith Lane TV with Anna Marie was being birthed. God has faith in you. The window to victory opens. Take this moment in time. Take it now. Go for it. When you go for it, it's when your true anointing kicks in. I've had people say to me, oh, Anna Marie, I'm anointed. I have an Esther anointing. I have a Deborah anointing. I know I'm anointed. I'm like, anointed for what? The anointing is set for an action you are to do for the Lord and faith. Your anointing cannot be activated unless you what? Use it. 
Esther was anointed to what? She had to do very, very scary, bold acts of faith. She would say, oh, I have an Esther anointing. I have this. Oh, I'm like, well, are you doing very risky, bold acts of faith? The kind of acts of faith that say, if I perish, I perish. Then if you're not, it's not an Esther anointing. Are you doing things that are scared, that are against the grain, that are against, right? Are you doing things that really stretch you? Are you are you going into the unknown and going boldly doing these things for the Lord? That's a true Esther anointing. Are you climbing to a top of a hill where you've never been before and going to pray over the land? Are you going to downtown of your city where you've never been before and going to repent and pray for the land and standing at your courthouse, even if people stare at you? But you still do it. Are you going to speak up at your school boards? I'm fighting for the children. Are you writing that book that God told you to write? Are you leaving a church that's dry toast with no move of the Holy Spirit? Even if your mom and your dad and everybody else went there for like 50 years, but you're like, uh, no. I want the Holy Ghost. And I'm coming out of this dry toast church. And I'm going to seek the move of the Holy Spirit. And I want to move in signs, wonders, and miracles. That can be a little scary. You start doing that, I'm telling you, the rest of your family will follow me out of there when they start to see the glory of God in your life. Come on. You are reading this book for a reason. There are no mistakes with God. Just by the timing of your reading this book, God is telling you, time to win with me. Don't be afraid to do the pass in the grass. I just told a story about Dale Earnhardt in here. Our Dale Earnhardt, he had a last chance to win. If he didn't if he didn't pass that car on that last lap and drive around him in the grass, he had to blaze his own trail, right? He was trying to pass this guy. He couldn't see any way to pass this guy on the track. So he tightened his belts, got up on the wheel, stood on the gas, and drove past him on the grass <laughs> and won the race. He blazed his own trail. <laughs> you want that kind of boldness. This is what it means when you've been equipped and anointed to take a risk for victory, even on the unpaved roads. You are so in the groove that you can make a pass even if the ground is shaky or slippery. You're going to fly right through with your divine momentum. God brings you to these moments. So you have to rely on these things he's given you to give him glory. Right? Your gifts, your anointings. Then you discover that you really have, then you discover what you really have been given to use on this earth. It's eye opening and it brings you into another level of glory. You learn how to use your anointing and how to be obedient and trust in God. You become fearless. You become the winner God destined you to be. Don't be afraid. I'm boldly asking God for these things. He is waiting for you to ask. Angels are ready to be activated on your behalf. But once heaven is activated on your behalf, you have to do your part too. It's about you and God and your assignment and purpose. And how many people out there will be impacted by it? Your victory is celebrated in heaven too. 
We all meet God by ourselves. We don't have a stunt man that we hired to go before God. We don't meet God with our husband or our kids. We stand before God alone. Did you fulfill what I called you to do and gifted you to do on the earth? I believe we are all asked that question by Jesus. I had to learn this. I had come to my moment. My past in the grass was getting on this microphone and staying on it. Now you are here. You are getting victory because I went for it. Others will get victory because you went for it. Do you understand? What is your past in the grass? What trail do you need to blaze? God did everything he promised he would do. What I did, what I needed to do by faith. God is faithful. He sees your expected win. And all the accolades that go with it, he wants you to see it and take it. Were you obedient when called? Did you use faithfully what was given to you? Ask yourself, how bad do you want it? Let me make this clear. The desire you have in your heart to be a winner and what you love to do and reach your goals is from God. He's the one that put it in you. It's not selfish to want to win. It's not selfish to want success. It's not selfish to want vic victory. It's not frivolous or self-serving to ask God to be a winner or successful in your life purpose. It's actually more selfish for you not to. Because your victories and wins are serving God. He will use them to activate others. There are people lined up behind you waiting for you to go for it so they can. To take the wins, you must first, one, have the vision. Two, trust in God and your gifts that he gave you. Three, ask God to anoint you and set you apart from the rest and anoint your gift with his Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to train you and equip you. And he will. Enjoy the journey there. It may not happen overnight, but the journey is just as good because you're doing it with God. Know you will succeed. Discern when, when to take a risk and to go for it. Celebrate and savor each victory, victory. Give God glory by showing others what he has done through you. You see, when we get success, it's all about who we give the glory to and who we serve with our success. Ask God to multiply it in your life. Expect more. Teach others to be winners. Years ago, I wondered about reincarnation. I know now it's a lie from the devil. The reason there are similarities in certain great people throughout history is because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit that is on them. Many winners and successful people have a certain anointing. It is from God. Combined with the gifts of God has assigned and designed in them. A special anointing that comes on them from the Holy Spirit to be exponentially victorious in what God has called them to do. You know, somebody said to me, oh, I saw this thing where President Trump must be reincarnated from General Patton or something. He even looks like him. I go, there's no such thing as reincarnation. That's a lie from the pit of hell. But we know that the anointing from God that was on General Patton doesn't go to heaven with him when he dies. 
and stays in the earth and goes to the next person that God calls up for that kind of leadership. That's why you see that same similarities between General Patton and President Trump. They have the same anointing from God. It's all from God to be used for his plans and purposes. You understand? And Patton's up there cheering on Trump and the rest of us. The anointing sets you apart for the rest. I also notice the winning anointing is always connected to that person's journey. The belief in their gifts God gave them, and most of all, a knowing that they have in their spirit, maybe even since childhood. It's also connected to that person's trust in God. Have you ever thought to yourself, I really believe God has called me up for a special purpose. I've, I've known it since I was little. I've felt it. Go to God. Say, what is it, God? Reveal it to me. I want to take the first step. I want to use that special something that you've given me. I'm not afraid. I'm not scared. Your Holy Spirit is with me. You're training me up for this. And God even used my time in order racing to train me up for my ministry. What, what, what has he been training you up for? To use for him. You may be wondering, how do I get that winning anointing? How do we get the victories I want? You ask God for it in Jesus' name. Then you show up for the Holy Spirit to train you up in it. Then you know that you know that you know it is he that has equipped you and his divine power and grace that is working through you. It's a knowing in your spirit. Then you go for the win. God gets the glory through your story. Come on. Come on. Type that in the chat. God gets the glory through my story. God gets the glory through my story. This is not just about you being victorious and reaching your goals. It's about giving God the glory and shining it all on him. And it's God that's done this. And you use your testimony of your victories to give God the glory. God gets the glory through my story. Come on, type it in. Type it in. God gets the glory through my story. This is not the last chapter, my friends. Get off your butt and move. God wants you to keep going. In John chapter 14, 13, 15, Jesus states this to his disciples. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Jesus repeats this twice. I think he's making a point. If you ask me, Jesus, anything, what? Yes, anything. And I have this declaration here in this book on page 295, how to go before the Lord and ask for a trailblazing winter's anointing from the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And in every chapter of this book, I have these trail, these, these decrees and these declarations. Okay. And you can actually go and ask for these things. And I've got the actual prayers, the actual declarations in this book, Faith to Full Speed, How to Do This. And, um, you know, what is, your, what is the win? What is your victory? Your marriage restored, your new home, 
your children's salvation, a business or career goal, a book being published, a movie script being accepted, your complete healing, your debts paid. I want to make a point to you, my friend, right now. Cast off all your religious thinking. Cast off all your stinking thinking. And I'm here to tell you that God created you to win and to ask to win and expect to win. You want victory? You want to take the win? Ask for it. Want it. No, it's yours. Do not be ashamed to be a winner and to boldly go after your wins. Victorious living belongs to you through Jesus Christ. Jesus was clear when he said, I came so you can have life and life abundant. John 10, 10. Let's look at the word abundant. It's a winner's word. It's an adjective. Existing or available in large quantities. Plentiful. Hebrew translation. Abundant, bountiful, copious, superfluous, flush, bounteous, rich, wealthy, affluent, well-healed, abundant, healed. Hello? Victorious. Woo! Are we clear? Jesus wants you to be a winner, an abundant, blessed winner, with prizes to show for it. He died and rose and was ascended to the right hand of God so we could win and take territory on the earth with him, through him, and for him. Do not take this for granted. Now it's time for and to take the win. You have Jesus' permission. You have asked for everything you need on this journey. Now let's go for the win with no shame. You have it in your sights. You can do this. Your Father God is proud of you. He enjoys the wins with you. What victory do you have in your sights? It's time to take it by force. Yep, that's what I said. There's a moment where you see the victory by faith and you know God has got your back and he's prepared you for this moment. There has to be a moment in you on this journey where the bold move has to happen in your life. In my experience, victories can come in two ways. They are either, either taken by force by a bold move of faith or have it as a suddenly from God because you have stayed faithful. When you have decided to follow Jesus, you have decided to take the win. Faith is the victory. Jesus is the reward. The life, that, the life you then have is in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God advances in the earth because of our bold acts of faith. When you are a kingdom of when you are a kingdom advancer, you have greatness on earth and in heaven. You are a winner. Are you a kingdom advancer? Listen to me. Are you a kingdom adv advancer? Are you doing bold acts of faith? Come on. Matthew eleven twelve states, and from the days of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by forth, force. This is good violence. Bold people of faith taking bold steps of action in a moment, taking the win and being an expectation of wins that could come any moment by God and with God. Take the win instances in the Bible. Sudden wins. Joseph, he went from the prison to the palace in one day. This came from a sudden move of God because Joseph stayed faithful and joyful in his journey. He kept his eyes on the victory that God promised him years before. He kept using his gifts faithfully, knowing the wind would come. When the opportunity came, he took it confidently. He was always at expectation. Take by force wins. Esther. This is the greatest take it by force story in history. This is if I perish, I perish. 
but I gotta go for it story. This is where you were born for such a time as this. And God positioned you right here at this very moment to, and the victory is yours. You just have to trust God and make a bold move with no excuses and take the victory. Come on. Wins are met for believers in Christ. The Apostle Paul instructs that we are to go for the win. Go for the prize. Race, race to win. There are winner's crowns waiting for us. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Run your race to win. I will do, I do all this for the sake of the gospel so that I may share in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way as to take the prize. Everyone who competes in the games trains with strict discipline. They do it for a crown that is perishable, but we do it for a crown that is imperishable, a crown in the spirit that is given to you from Jesus Christ. We must desire to win and win bigly for Jesus on this earth. So it is okay to desire and go for this prize. In fact, we are being told to do so as believers. And you know, when you receive that crown in heaven, you get to line up and cast it at Jesus' feet. Do you want to be in that line? I do. I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I don't want to be stuck in fear. It's time for us to advance the kingdom. Jesus is ex expecting us to do it and to do what each and every one of us is called to do. He starts you right where you are. And we can receive our crown of victory and we get to put it at Jesus' feet in heaven. What an honor. Who wants that? I do. How about you? Stop waiting around. Stop being scared. Stop sitting in the dusty pews of the church waiting to be beamed out of here. Get up off your butt and say, Lord, I will do what you've called me to do. I'm not afraid. How do you want me to help prepare your bride? How do you want me to work in the harvest? How do you want me to advance the kingdom here on earth? How do you want me to do the Great Commission? I could do all things through you who strengthens me. And everyone will know that it's Jesus Christ who works through me. And they will want that too. Christ is the victory, Christ is the victory, oh glorious victory is Jesus Christ our Lord. Woohoo! And I had to, right, I had to write this book and I remember writing it and this book was already written in heaven. I had to partner with the Holy Spirit and be disciplined with the Lord Jesus Christ to get it done. And now many of you are seeing victory because of it. Don't put it off any longer, my friends. The time is now. Don't wait on somebody else to do it for you. Be your own stunt man. Be your own stunt woman. Woo! I love y'all. Thanks for staying for story time. And, you know, 
They're not really as a story. It's his story. It's history. It's the greatest story ever told of King Jesus that is still being fulfilled chapter by chapter through us. All for his glory and his kingdom. You want to be a part of the story? Being part of the Lamb's Book of Life? Having a chapter in his book? I do. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity. And all of heaven is cheering us on. And I'm cheering you on. I love you, my friends. God bless you.